laminar flow eventually becomes unstable to disturbances of an intermediate size or frequency, the range of which increases with the Reynolds number. If such disturbances are present in the flow, its orderly character will deteriorate rapidly into the irregular state known as fluid turbulence. The careful injection of dye at the rounded inlet of a pipe will reveal similar occurrences. The flow is seen to be stable at low Reynolds numbers, even though it is obviously disturbed. If the Reynolds number R sub D is sufficiently high, however, even imperceptible disturbances will produce the onset of turbulence in sudden bursts, as can also be observed at the pipe outlet. The fin seen below the laminar jet is simply low velocity fluid from the wall region. Once R exceeds about 2,000, existing disturbances will generally lead to turbulence, whereupon the surface of the jet assumes a totally different character. Here the initial disturbance is provided by separation at the edge of an unrounded inlet. Multiple die jets now permit the formation and lateral spread of the individual eddies to be followed. Though fluids are treated as homogeneous, it is really the interaction of the individual molecules that produces the viscous effects. For example, the kinematic viscosity is considered proportional, at least for a gas, to the molecular spacing and the molecular velocity. Now, fluid turbulence can be imagined to have somewhat the same properties, but on a molar rather than a molecular scale. Thus, a measure of the eddy size and the eddy velocity is considered proportional to the kinematic eddy viscosity, epsilon. Now, the simple relationship for shear in uniform flow in terms of the molecular viscosity can be extended to include the eddy viscosity as well. It must be noted that whereas nu is a function of the fluid properties, epsilon depends wholly upon the state of motion. Now, the comparative roles of epsilon and nu can be seen from this diagram of the velocity distribution for laminar and turbulent flow. Because of the mixing process, the velocity in the turbulent zone is much more nearly constant. At the wall, where the turbulence is inhibited, the velocity gradient, and hence the intensity of shear, is thus many times as great as in purely laminar flow. This disparity is also evident from a plot of the resistance coefficient against the Reynolds number for the boundary layer. The line for purely turbulent flow lies farther and farther above that for laminar flow as the distance Reynolds number increases. If laminar flow becomes turbulent at some intermediate value, the composite curve will approach the turbulent limit only asymptotically. Much the same situation is found in pipe resistance, though now the laminar case is actually independent of the Reynolds number. Again, the resistance to turbulent flow is many times as great. If the pipe is rough, it may still behave like a smooth one at intermediate Reynolds numbers, when viscous effects at the wall are still appreciable but like a fully rough one at high Reynolds numbers. An increase in relative roughness will simply displace the curve in the direction of higher resistance.